what's up guys so i'm gonna do a little something today um actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk a little bit about some rumors that's going on now the rumors basically is that one Becky Lynch being a free agent soon. I don't know exactly how soon. I know it's really soon. It may be this month or next month that her contract is up. And people are speculating that she may be coming to AEW. Now, of course, automatically, the WWE diehards don't want that to happen because they're just stupid like that, that they think they know what's better for everybody. Oh, that's a big mistake. If she goes to the uh, AEW, she should stay in WWE. It's like, no, all that means is if she goes to the WWE, you guys with your half ass support, fan support, will do the same things that you did towards Mercedes Monet, you know, Adam Copeland, um, which is you're going to sit there and say stupid things like, oh, well, well, Becky Lynch is my favorite wrestler, but unfortunately for her, I won't be watching AEW because. I'm loyal to the WWE and all that goofy nonsense, but um, um, here's the thing. So, she's done so much in the WWE. There's times where you need to challenge yourself to do things differently. And you always have these people that think that they know everything. They know what's better for you than you do. Now, when I look at, uh, when I look at, you know, where Becky Lynch has stood, what she's done, you know, um, if she is coming to AEW, that's not something you want people to know. You want it to be a surprise. Like when Ruby Soho came out, nobody saw that coming. There's been several, like when Stain came out, sad it don't work. The, the only thing about the Sting situation, because it was during COVID. So, you know, but I mean, so it wasn't any, you know, real, there was no crowd out there. But like, um, you know, basically it, it's, it's like um, you don't want people to know. You, you wanted to, to, to remain, you know, quiet as kept. So, with that being said, um, WWE fans are, oh, why would she go there? Oh, she's stupid if you, she go. I'm like, wow. Now, look at how, just because of a rumor, and even if it's true, so what? Now she's stupid. Now, you know, it, they're already preparing an excuse and, 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 and bitterness towards her just in case it's true. Now, if she does go there, okay, I'm nobody's fan. Like I said, if I had to say I have a favorite wrestler, I would have to say Sting because he's the guy I always wanted to see win. You know, whether he was a good guy, bad guy, whatever. Bottom line, I remember him when him and the Ultimate Warrior were, were, were the Blade Runners. You know, he was Flash. The Warrior was Rock. And so, yeah, I mean, um, you know, he would be that guy. But overall... Um, it's just when you look at you know contributions, like I said, man. It's for me. It's it's not about um, you know a, a person staying one particular place if they're no longer happy there. Okay, so if Becky Lynch decides that she wants to go to AEW, so what? And the problem with WWE fans is they don't think another company should exist unless it's a small company like TNA. That pose no threat. And bottom line, no matter what happens, every other company sucks because it's not WWE. Well, you know, these idiot fans, um, what, what, what can you really say? You know, it's, it's not about them. They, they make it about them. It's, it's so funny how one, a person make a decision in their life and you got idiot fans that literally, literally try to make someone else's decision about them. Like Becky Lynch is stabbing you in the back. If, if she leaves and goes to AEW, I mean, pretty much, um, <laughs> you know, she, she's been on Raw, she's been on SmackDown, she's been on NXT, she's won championships, she's lost championships, she's helped people get over, she's been, you know, pushed to get over. I mean, so, once again, you, you know, you do what you do. I mean, AEW is not a freaking retirement home, man. So, it's like, you guys don't want to see her do what's going to make her happy. And if that's what it comes down to, so what? So what? So for all the people that, that and let me tell you how this works. For all the people that's already saying, oh, there's no way Becky Lynch is going to go over there. Like as if she's a bigger star than Adam Copeland. 
as if she's a bigger star than Mercedes Monet. You understand what I mean? And 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 you know Brian Danielson and, and John Moxley. You know, uh, um, and we can go on. You know, Buddy Buddy Matthews, Brody Kelly, like all these. You know, these people that came there, and you don't want to see these people go out and do the thing that you know puts food on their table. You understand what I mean? And pay their bills, and unless you're gonna do that, I mean, you really need to just like lay, 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 lay it to rest, man. So you know, there's a rumor that she may come. Well, if she does come, keep it on a hush. Don't don't let that get out. People don't need to know. So if she does come, let them find out like everybody else. The night that it happens, you know, let let everybody else find out that way. So if she did come. And, and, and then people are going, oh, it won't matter anyway. Because after two weeks, they're going to forget about it like they do everybody. AEW sucks, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is what I mean about wrestling, so-called wrestling fans. So everything has to be done the way that WWE does it. Everything. Or it sucks. So these are the type of people that you can't even, like, like something's wrong with these folks. And once again, right, they claim they hate the company so much, but as soon as they hear a rumor, they hear anything, let's just start talking trash. Let's let's already get the hate going. And that's all it is. It's deliberate, ignorant, miserable hate hatred coming from people because they're just miserable people. Like Becky Lynch gives a shit what you think. <laughs> you know, hey, whatever she chooses to do, whatever she chooses to do. Just like when Jade Cargill chose to go to, to, to WWE. Now she's facing backlash because of a match that happened at Clash at the castle. They're blaming her. Oh, she did this. You know, she's the reason they lost, blah, blah, blah. Oh, she needs to go back to AEW. She needs to go back to the Performance Center. She's trash. She's overrated. She's a hype job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I told you guys, her leaving AEW, people wasn't glad that Jade Cargill came to the WWE because they love Jade Cargill. No, they were just basically knowing she was one of the top stars in AEW. And the fact that it's like they feel like it was a checkmate. Yeah, we took one of their biggest stars. Okay, so bottom line. Now Mercedes Monet comes in and all of a sudden, uh, Mercedes Monet is overrated. Like, here we go. So it, it is what it is. You know, um, ignorant people will be ignorant. And, and they need help. Now, the other thing is, Shane McMahon has been a rumor, has been popping up constantly that he's going to, he's been in talks with, you know, people within AEW. Now, here's the funny thing. What I read in the video that I watch, see, these guys, they say a bunch of nonsense just to get your attention. They clickbait you. Because you see this nonsense with Rick, uh, uh, what's his name, Vince Russo and these guys talking about EC3 and other guys talking about uh, Shane McMahon buying AEW. First of all, you got to be stupid if you think that Tony Khan is willing to sell his company. And uh, if you think that, Vic, that, that Shane McMahon has more money than Tony Khan, you're a freaking idiot. You're a freaking fool. It doesn't matter if it was Vince or Stephanie. They're not, they're not, sell, what the hell is Tony Khan going to sell AEW for? Like, so, so you know what I mean? Like, like, like come on, that's a no way. Um, what the idiot that are talking, now, the only thing I, uh, I agree with Vince, that, with Russo saying that nobody at this point is going to do business with Vince McMahon because, of, you know, him and his little perverted mind said, no, this bullshit finally come back to him after all of these years. You know, Brock Lesnar man came up in that mix as well. So, him talking about well, Shane, his fans are whistling, blah, blah, blah. Okay, listen, it's like this. I don't know what Shane McMahon, what type of impact he can have on, on AEW. I don't know what his role would be. Uh, more than likely, it would be a backstage role. I don't want to see him going up in there trying to wrestle. No. Um, but at the same time, whatever his role would be, you would believe he'd have something to do with creative and um, basically him and Tony, I mean, it, it definitely, um, it could work, you know what I mean? But I, I don't know if, if, you know, if it's just rumor or not, but the fact that anytime when rumors come up, like, think about this. What was said was that Shane McMahon made a comment to somebody he was speaking to, one of the wrestlers, that's a former WWE guy. So I don't know if it was Adam Copeland or whoever it was. But he, he makes the comment, could you imagine um, that crowd if I walked out there or something like that? Well, 
if you make if there's rumors like that and he's in talks with, with, with a wrestler saying whatever he said, it, once again, it would be, no, nah, we don't want people to know that Shane McMahon is going to come out. We want for him, for, if this is true, once he comes out and people like see it, there's like, whoa, out of nowhere. So that's one of those holy shit moments, you know? That's what the crowd will be chanting. Now, it would make zero sense that Shane McMahon is on the phone with Adam Copeland or whoever it was he spoke to, Brian Danielson or whoever it was, saying, imagine if I did this or that. And then he's not in talks with Tony Khan. Like, that would be completely stupid. Like, just think about it. Now, if it was just a conversation, why would anybody have to even know? You understand what I mean? It's not like there was, it was phone recorded, there were cameras there. So why would anybody even have to know? So that's why I said, between it's either a complete lie that someone just wanted to make a story just to get uh, views and eyes on their, on their channel or whatever, or it's something that's in the works. You understand what I mean? So I don't know where Shane McMahon stands in, 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 in the WWE. His name never comes up. But even for people that say things like, yeah, but Triple H is married to Stephanie. Okay, what the hell does that to do with, with, with Shane McMahon? And like I said in a previous video, um, you know, if, if you are a part of something or you were a part of something that your family started, right? You, you know, okay, when they no longer have control or power, what are you holding on to? Just the fact I've been a part of this. So I made a comparison. Like, what if, if my if my parents started an amusement park? And, like, that's all I know coming up was we had the family business. Well, all of a sudden, through time, different investors and people come in doing business. And my mom and dad, nobody in my family no longer has power. Now, they have high positions, but they have to answer to someone. It's no longer a family business. Well... If freaking SeaWorld said, hey, hey, we can use your talents over here, right? Well, why would I not go? I'm no, I'm no longer relevant in the company that my parents started, so why would I not go, right? Yeah, I got the qualifications to come and help run, run SeaWorld. I, 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 you know, I, 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 I know how to do business management. I've worked in sales and marketing. I know. I, so why would I, why would I not go? How, I, I owe, how you, what, what, what are my mom and dad gonna say? Why are you helping the competition? Mom, Dad, you guys have been removed. <laughs> You're no longer in power. You don't have anything. To, so no. So so my point is, what would Vince, what would Shane McMahon have, have to not go there for based on what a company that, that, like I said, his dad no longer has power. Stephanie doesn't call any shots. You know, Triple H, he's the brother-in-law. So what does that have to do with Shane McMahon? Now, what AEW fans might not like about that is because the whole point is to get away from the WWE mindset. We want a wrestling company that is done in a way where it feels authentic and not doing the same thing that, that WWE is doing. Now, can Shane McMahon do something different? And him and Tony Khan can collaborate on some things and, 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 and make it come out even better? I don't know. Maybe it's something that might happen we might see. But once again... Um, as far as it just being a conversation of him saying, hey, can you imagine the, the fans if I walked out there? You understand what I mean? Like, why? Why Why would this be made known? You understand what I'm saying to you? It's just a conversation between... So if it was... Like I said, I don't know exactly who, who the wrestler was, but what I'm saying is, let's say if it was him and Brian Danielson, why would Brian Danielson uh, feel the need to do an interview and just mention what he talked about with Shane McMahon? Just to mention it. You understand what I'm saying to you? So it's like, hey, let's see how people react to this story. Now, Shane McMahon's name hasn't come up in years. Like, literally, you don't hear anybody talking about Shane McMahon. Like, at least two, three years, nobody's talking about Shane McMahon. With the exception of him not having the same power in the WWE as he once had or whatever, something like that. But now, all of a sudden, when his name comes up, oh, there's no way he's going to um, AEW. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Anybody that had any type of value to their name, if they leave the WWE and come to AEW, it's a curse. And they always talk about how they want this person back in WWE. Well, if that person left the WWE, who the hell are you? What the hell do you think you know about everybody's life? You know what's best for everybody. So if Shane McMahon and Becky Lynch decided that they were going to pop up in AEW, well, it is what it is. Right? 
if they don't do it. So even for Tony Khan to say that it's not going to happen, now this is a situation where he could be saying that basically to make it a surprise. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when it happens, it's an old shit moment. It might happen at a, you know, maybe a forbidden door. Maybe, you understand what I mean? So it could be a situation where when it does happen, it's a pay-per-view. So now when the word gets out, the next dynamite and everything else that follows, it's like, okay, let's see what happens now. And pretty much, um, you, you want spoilers. Like, remember that night when Lex Luger was on Raw? And then all of a sudden he showed up on Nitro the same night and both shows, shows were live. That was like, out of everything I ever saw, that that to me was like the biggest shocker of all because he was just on Raw. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. So that was a big shocker. Okay. Now, that's how, but, but, but that's how you do things. Now everything's about spoilers. Everybody want to tell you what's going to happen before it happens. Okay. So that being said, the next guy is Drew McIntyre. Now, there was no word that I heard that he's heading to AEW. But when you look at who else is out there, okay, does Drew want to go to New Japan and hang out there and have to deal with, you know, don't know. Do you think that Drew McIntyre uh, wants to go to TNA Impact? He was there before, but do you think that that's where he'd rather go over AEW? I don't really think so. Do you think that Drew McIntyre hates AEW like the idiot fans do? For what? So, basically, him walking away. Now, you have people saying that they think it's storyline. Um, the Rock tweeted that he can't believe it. It's like, man, Drew was one of his favorite wrestlers and gave him props for like what he's done and contribute to the WWE. But again, he's another guy that's been everywhere. And basically, he has contributed and been a part of more than just the WWE. So, for Drew, people are looking at it like the most likely place that he's going to end up is going to be AEW. Once again, salty WWE fans, oh, there's no way Drew's going to like, Wow. I, I, I've i never seen people so hateful and stupid, man. So it's like, if, if that's the case, that there's no way he's going to go. That just lets you know that if that's what he chooses, those same people are going to go, well, Drew is my favorite wrestler, but hey, I don't like AEW, so I'm not watching. And then like hypocrites, they're going to watch. They're going to complain, but they're going to watch. Because that's what they do. Then they're going to go on whatever channel that's speaking negative. Oh, Drew should have stayed in WWE because Drew was this and Drew was that. You don't know what these people are going through. You're not there. You're not in their shoes. Um, and basically, it, it, it just comes down to, you know, a person is going to do what they need to do, what's best for them. So he said, you know, like, listen, you know, Vince Russo is saying he thinks that Drew is making a mistake. Who cares what Vince Russo thinks? People said Vince Russo was a mistake, period. They blamed so much of, of, of what didn't go right in WCW on him. Not just Bischoff. Not just Hogan. They blamed everybody. And, and you know, Vince Russo would never sit here and say, yeah, it was my fault that this happened and that happened. No. He'll have a defense for himself. So, you know, what what is it? You know, what what is it? about someone going somewhere outside of the WWE is such a big problem. It is what it is, man. I mean, there's football players that play for certain teams. All of a sudden, they get drafted or they get traded to another team. And guess what? Now they got to pack their bags and find someone else to go and play. And so it's like, you, you know, you, you, you find yourself in a situation where once you, once you start to, you know, tell yourself... You belong in a particular place. But that place is not treating you right. Hell, you got you got husband and wife that divorce and separate. And you guys are crying and bitching over a freaking wrestler leaving a company. 
you know, if, if he ends up leaving and he goes AEW or anywhere else, I mean, if, if, if you're a fan of the guy's work and, and you support what he, you know, him as a wrestler, then okay, then you should you should follow wherever he go. That's where you go. You know, and of course, for those that do, most of them will leave stupid comments like, I'm only here for Drew. Like, like as if Drew gives a shit. Like, Drew's going to call you and personally thank you and give you half of his paycheck. So this is the, 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 the idiotic way that people think. And my thing is, more wrestling is 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 is, 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 is more for wrestling fans. And the thing about the majority of wrestling fans, honestly, they're casuals. This is why it's like I'll choose football over wrestling. I I I I I'll choose you know basketball over wrestling. I'll choose another sport over wrestling. A true wrestling fan is gonna choose gonna choose wrestling over whatever else is on. That's just the way it goes. And if you notice, every every company has always been built around the W, uh, you know, the NBA, the NFL, or whatever else, the Olympics, you know, the, the, the World Series. And it's always been built around other sports that pull in more viewers. So, um, you know, just just to see someone hate, you think because Jade Cargill left AEW, I'm sitting there going, oh man, the hell with Jade Cargill. Oh, I hope she fails in WWE. No. For what? What, what does her failing... Or succeed and do for me. It's just a show to watch. You know, I like Jane Cargill as a performer. You know, she has the look. She has she has the ability. You know, and um, yeah. I mean, basically, she was a, she was a heavy hitter in, in, in AEW. She became a heavy hitter. In, she was a heavy hitter in WWE. Okay, she just not been there that long yet. And in all honesty, you know what people forget is Jane Cargill was there before she was in AEW. She was doing the tryouts, and she was, uh, she she ended up coming to AEW. So the WWE didn't believe her. She, what let her go and build a name for herself at AEW. All of a sudden, now, oh, okay, cool. Guess what? Now, when her when her uh, uh, contract is up, we need to get her back. She looks great. She's amazing, and that's what happened. And she chose the WWE. But like I said, she had a mishap in a match, and then all of a sudden, now, oh. I'm sick of Bianca carrying her. All her opponents have to carry her. She, she doesn't know how to do anything. I mean, they had, oh, they, they roasted her. They roasted Jay. So, yeah, they're not Jay Cargill fans that's doing that. These are WWE fans, like I said, that's just glad that WWE was able to acquire a top uh, 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 heavy hitter in AEW. But yet, when a, when a top heavy hitter in WWE leaves for AEW, then all of a sudden you turn your back on that person. Oh, that person's stupid. That person don't know what they're doing. But you know everything. And all you are is a spectator that sit up and have nothing to do but sit up and fanboy for people and, simp and be a simp for everybody. So it is what it is. But um, if uh, Drew is heading over there, so be it. If Becky Lynch is heading over there, so be it. If Shane McMahon is he heading over there, so be it. And the only reason that you guys have something against that idea it's simply because you don't want anything to happen for AEW where they become bigger than what they already are. And that's all it is. You don't want to see them prosper and succeed. And so those same people you're talking about, you don't care about them unless they're in the WWE. So you don't really care about them either. So that's all that comes down to. That is all it comes down to. So that being said, when I look at um, you know all of these people that wrestle, look at Ruby Soho. You know what people don't think about? They talk about ratings and all this nonsense, and, and really, it's irrelevant. But when they, where's Hangman Adam Page? We know that he was injured. MJF just came back. Kenny Omega still out. Ruby Soho is pregnant. Timo just became a mom. Sammy Guevara, we haven't seen him for a while. You know, there's several faces that we don't see. We don't know that they're no longer in um, AEW. But we find out these people are injured. You know, uh, Britt Baker. That's six people. Then you got, um, who else is out? I mean, uh, 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 Darby Allen. That's seven people. Come back, made a few appearances. He was saying he probably needed to get a surgery or something. He hurt his foot and all this. He got hurt, doing, you know, climbing Mount Everest. And so all this stuff. Um, so there, a lot of their top faces, top faces that you see on their show, hasn't, hasn't been there. You know, Juice Robinson just finally um, um, recently came back. So, yeah, they have a lot of people that you haven't seen. 
So you, you know when 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 and so the point is you don't realize how relevant these people are in their role to the company until you don't see them. And then it's like, well, yeah, it doesn't feel the same without them, right? So, yeah, man. So you hear Tony Khan talking about getting that feel back. Yeah, yeah. Those individuals that you don't see anymore. You know, them letting, like, Matt and Jeff Hardy leave and didn't really do anything. Matt and Jeff Hardy didn't do anything for the ratings. Matt and Jeff Hardy has slipped as wrestlers. They don't perform like they used to. They struggle. You can see them literally struggling in the ring. So them coming back to TNA, that's fine. Well, when they left TNA the first time, what did they say? They went out in a sour note, said TNA don't know what they're doing, they don't have a clue, and all these things. They wound up going back to the WWE. They went to the WWE. They became nothing but jobbers. They left the WWE, came to AEW, praised AEW, told them this is a company that pays attention to its fans and its wrestlers. All these great things. Now, Matt Hardy ends up saying, Tony Khan needs to focus more on moments instead of wrestling matches. Isn't that what the fuck people come to a wrestling show to see? They have moments. Their style is just not what like, like the WWE style. So we're talking about creating moments. See, when you hear the fans chanting, this is wrestling, because that's what they want. But you see that WWE mindset, it goes to show you, when these guys try to employ WWE tactics and strategies, don't you know the whole WWE universe will be saying, oh, AEW's copying the WWE. They're trying to be like them. Look at what they're doing. This is exactly what I'm saying. Now you go running back to TNA. Okay, fine. What's left for Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy? Like, what else do they have that it's going to really matter, that people really want to see other than just the fact, okay, Matt and Jeff is back in TNA. And, and, and I can tell you something. Have you noticed that TNA's crowd size didn't change? But they were so much louder this past week. Why? Because they've seen Jordan Grace in, TNA, in, 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 in NXT. They saw her perform in NXT. Right? They seen someone from NXT, which they, they didn't even know the hell she was. But it makes them feel more like now, like, wait, so Jordan Grace and all these other wrestlers here in um, TNA, they are as good as WWE wrestlers. Or they do belong. Right? Yeah, it takes certain things to happen for people to really look at what's in front of them and understand it. Brian Myers, Matt Cardona, all these people that were once in WWE that are no longer there. You forget that they were there. And a lot of them, like, for example, when you were like a mid-card guy and you go to a different company and become like a top guy, people, f this is, and this is the part about professional wrestling that I'm saying that people seem to, they forget. It's not a real sport. It's entertainment. It's really not. But that's what you come to, to see the rest of it. You come for all of it, I guess, you know? But um, it's like, stop expecting every company to have the same setup. Otherwise, what will be special? And the same attitude that people have, oh, there's no need for a new wrestling game. Because 2K can do everything. You can make everybody. You can make every arena. Right? So why do we need a new wrestling game from a different company? They don't want Okay, they don't want any other company to do things successfully. It's as simple as that. So therefore, they don't want you to enjoy something that a different company is doing outside of the WWE, whether it's their actual wrestling pro program or whether it's video games. Or whatever, it doesn't matter. So, <clears throat> you know, you know, these are things that people need to understand. Man. You you don't dictate someone's life, and that's what you guys are. I'm pretty sure if your ass work at Home Depot and they fire you or you're being mistreated and you don't feel stable and secure in your job and you find out that Lowe's is hiring, I guarantee you, now you don't know what type of situation you're going to walk into at Lowe's, but if you got to the point where you're sick and tired of the WWE, uh, uh, you know, Home Depot, you want to leave, no different from somebody who wants to leave the WWE to go to AEW or TNA, you know, Naomi left the WWE when, 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 when Mercedes Monet did. We know what the situation was. Diehard WWE fans were blaming like acting as if Naomi and, and Mercedes would be in difficult to work with. Oh, they, they're two angry black women that's just, just you know, ungrateful. All this nonsense. And like, you see like this guy Dutch Mantel. Man, he, he and, and Eric Bischoff are just like 
They are on the WWE bandwagon. Vince Russo, all of them, they are just on the bandwagon where they purposely overlook things. There's things that I see happen that they don't talk about. Because they don't want to feel like they're going against the WWE. Like I said, because there's always the possibility of maybe you might get that one call and get, get your shot to come back. And that's all it is. They don't want to burn bridges. But when you sit up and say certain people are not as good as they think they are, or they're overrated, you don't say that when they're in the WWE. It's just when they refuse to take their shit. Like, let me give you an example. Remember when Vince McMahon had that kiss my ass club? Now, I don't know about anybody else. I don't know about any of you. But if Vince McMahon would have came to me and pitched the idea that I'm going to get on my knees and he's going to stand in front of me, drop his pants, and I have to kiss his ass, that would be my last day of, 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 of being in the WWE and probably my last day of being a free man. I'd probably, I'd probably still be in jail right now. And what kind, like what, what is, so you see what's happening to Vince McMahon right now? He, he earned that. He deserves it. Because it finally caught up to his old ass. And that's pretty much all it is. What type of a human being would sit up and even think about something like that? Now, could you imagine if Tony Khan pitched the idea? Okay, Kenny Omega, you want to keep your job? You are going to kiss my ass. And then, and then if you don't do it, he yells out, you're fired. Like, no, stop it, man. We're not going to We're not gonna play that game. We're not going to play that game. So this is what I'm saying. The WWE does some really ridiculous shit. Like, do you guys remember that that scene when, when Stephanie McMahon kissed Vince on his lips and kind of, like, paused and held the back of his head like it was her boyfriend or something? Like, I mean, they have some really sketchy, edgy, disgusting type shit. Triple H drugged her up and kidnapped her. And, I mean, all this kind of stuff that, they, that they've done. Vince McMahon being a gigolo cheating on his wife. I mean, all types of stuff. That's not what I want to see. Not in WWE, not in AEW, not in TNA. You know, Bobby Lashley cheating on, uh, um, Lana cheating with Bobby Lashley on, 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 uh, Miro. You know, I, I'm, look at the quirky, look, look at the, look at the stuff that they do. That stuff doesn't do anything for me. I don't care for those goofy, weird ass storylines. I just don't. And then the thing about wrestling, what I really don't like. That turns me off. And the WWE does this more than anyone. If you listen to Tony Khan talk. He talk about the matches. And, and the story. What you know, Because what he did to him. Now he wants payback. So I think that at, against all odds. Against uh, you know, the forbidden door. whatever. You know, this is going to be a great match. I think the fans are going to love it. The WWE says that. Well you know we put the belt on him. Because you know. Um, he basically is a hard worker. And the fans took to him. So. Like, they came in and pitched the idea. So, you know, I knew I was going to lose the... And it's like, just look at what you're doing. Yeah, we all know it's a work. We know it's not real. That's why I'm saying it really behooves me when I hear people speak about this sport like it's a real fucking sport. So you're going to tell someone where they should bruise and batter their bodies at. You're going to tell someone what company they should get stitches for. What company they should stay at because you want to see them there. Just for the sake of... of Wanting to see another company not be able to get top stars from a different company. Like, come on, man. I've been watching Jacob Fatu over at MLW for the longest. So, it's like I said, if not for other companies, and I stand on what I say, okay? And I mean that. If not for AEW, 10 times out of 10, Cody Rhodes is not in the WWE right now. If not for AEW, 10 times out of 10, CM Punk is not back in the WWE right now. And not one of these sorry people look at it like that. And that's the reality. Because bottom line, who brought, who was able to get Punk back? And of course he changes his story. Why? And why WWE try to capitalize on it? Because it was a hot story. And all of a sudden he pops back up. And they know that, okay, it's a demand for Punk. So it's a business move. What has Punk done since he got there? Since other than come back and get injured. Then screw over um, Drew McIntyre. He's done, really, he's done really much of nothing. Just talk. So bottom line is... is, is, is People are going to go where they feel more comfortable. But we all see you think the grass is greener on the other side until you get there. And all of a sudden, here they come popping right back up. So, it is what it is. But I don't know what type of impact Shane McMahon would have if he, if he goes there. Drew, um, you know, Drew, Drew Galloway does what he does in the ring. Becky does what she does in the ring. And, um, you know, whatever, you know... 
what direction the product goes. They have three shows, and it, it's like, you know, um, I don't want to see them go into a format where Collision has its own champion and, and uh, Rampage has its own champion. Dynamite has its own. I, I don't, I, that, you know, it, it was okay at one point when the WWE was doing it initially, but through time, it, it gets old, especially when they do drafts. And it's like, if I'm drafting on Raw, why am I popping up on SmackDown? If I'm drafting on SmackDown, why am I popping up on Raw or NXT? Why? For what reason? Well, we need a ratings boost. So what's the purpose of the draft then? Well, what's the purpose? You don't you don't see a guy play for the Dallas Cowboys this week. The next week he's playing for the Vikings. The next week he's back playing for the Cowboys. Like, no, that's not how it goes. You know, so what's the purpose of all that? And then all this double champion stuff where, you know, guys are coming out holding all these belts and, 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 and um, you know, they're doing everything other than making a product stand out. From, from you know, SmackDown and Raw don't feel alike, just like NXT don't feel like either one of them. But they have the same feel in terms of, like, the the, 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 the repetitiveness, you know, and, and doing the same type of, like, real childish-like storylines over and over. So, you know, as we, as a lot of you might have loved and been intrigued by, by the Uso story, man, that was the most boring, longest story that I can remember watching in professional wrestling. That storyline was so dry, so repetitive, and just like, who cares about who sits at the head of the table? Who really gives a shit, man? Jay and Jimmy are nothing but mid-carters, glorified tag team. Outside of being a tag team, glorified mid-carters. They're, they're, they're not singles championship material. They're not someone that's going to hold um, um, you know, a title and like lead the company to a different direction. No, that's not what's going to happen with them. Just like the New Day. They just basically... I mean, I remember the New Day and the Usos being the only actual official team. And then those Viking-looking people came along, whatever. And then every time I saw them, they were losing. I'm like, yeah, they got a nice old-school menacing Bruiser Brody slash Barbarian type look. But they, 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 damn, they lose every time I see them. And basically, when, when, when you look at it all, it's like, well, what are these guys doing that's so great, that stands out? But nothing. Chad Gable get these silly, goofy storylines with, with Otis and, and the chick and all these things that happen. And, and so, like, I'm not, like, those things don't intrigue me. So when I'm watching solid wrestling matches, I understand, okay, storyline, all of it comes, that's what the wrestling fans have gotten used to. But I just don't think it's fair for a wrestling company to be expected to, let's copy what the WWE is doing. And then, and then, and then get called out for copy. But then when they do something different, Oh, they have no vision. Oh, they're just doing... Like, people, listen. What I think AEW has done wrong is they've gotten away from their original format, which was the win-loss records, making it have more of a sporty feel, um, the win-loss records reset, and it's mentioned this is a weekly thing. When they got away from that, because that definitely had a different feel to it, it made the matches feel more relevant because guess what? Now you have a win-loss record. You understand what I mean? You're trying to get back to that point of winning titles. So, yeah, we know your overall matches have accumulated. Of course, you're going to have more than 14 matches. But when they look and go, this guy's 14-0 and 0, or this person is 11-2 and 2 on the season. So, yeah, every calendar year is a season. You understand what I'm saying? Just like in football and basketball. So, I feel like them getting away from that original format, that right there doesn't stand out anymore. Because they don't, they don't stick to it. So, if you're not going to stick to that, and you're going to, you know, do things the way you're doing it now, right? Well, yeah, people are going to expect you to do, go more into storytelling. You understand what I'm saying? But then if you do that, you know what people are going to say? Nah, what is AEW doing? That's This is not their format. That's not what they're supposed to do. But when they're not doing it, you're saying that's what they should do. People don't know what the hell they want, you know, and and and, and the things that made AEW stand out, that's, that's the thing they got away from. Now, I still love the product. I still think it's a great show. But, yeah, those things that made you stand out in the first place, it's like you can't get away from that, man. And you have to find a way to reinvent things. And that's just the way the business go. Just like you see wrestlers reinvent themselves and keep recreating different characters and personas for themselves. It's the same thing. But um, anyway, we'll see what happens. If these are just rumors or it's or if it's gonna happen. I don't want to read spoilers. I don't want to know. 
what's going to happen. So either it is going to happen or it's not. But at the same time, I feel like nobody has the right, okay, to get mad or upset because someone makes a decision to do business. So whether they end up in AEW or whether they stay in WWE, we'll see how it goes. Shane McMahon is, is not relevant in WWE at all. Drew McIntyre, Drew Galloway, whatever you we call him, he's probably going to go back to Galloway if he leaves, the, if he really leaves, because he basically, like I said, according to The Rock's tweet, he's done. But um, at the end of the day, people are saying, oh, what he has to do is come back and, and get even with CM Punk. Yeah, if CM Punk can, 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 can not get injured, not trip and break his fucking ankle, you know, break his damn elbow and toe, because he, cause he, he, the guy's injury prone, you know? I'm getting sick of hearing about CM Punk because it's like every they keep talking about the guy. The guy is he's hurt every time you turn around. He doesn't cut some promo. He has some words for someone, then all of a sudden he's injured. And like he just, he can't stay injury free. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, these guys go where they go, and none of us got the right to sit and say where somebody should go, what they sh where they shouldn't go. I can look at things and and see. I understand like when you heard Sting say the reason that he didn't go to the WWE. Is because he didn't know, he didn't trust how he wanted to use him. He really didn't know, he just didn't trust it. He felt like they were going to try to mock WCW. And Sting know that. And, they, and, and didn't they do just that in his in his career? And his he lost every fucking match he had. And all he fucking did was make appearances, showing up. And he get the, and you know in wrestling, whenever the, whenever the good guy gets the best of you outside of the ring, you know when the match time comes, you're going to lose. That, that's, it's always like that. It's like... It's like the, the blonde chick that gets naked, right? Whatever chick gets naked in a horror movie gets killed. It's, 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 that, it's just like one of those things. So, um, Jordan Grace said the same thing. She really just didn't know what WWE like wanted with her, like how they were going to treat her. And she just kept staying with TNA because she just felt more comfortable there. You've heard several people say that about the WWE. And especially if you came from WCW because they wanted to try to put you in a match where WWE is going to prevail over WCW. And that, and we, we see how they treated Booker T. Everybody talk about the five-time champ. Yeah, but look, he couldn't beat, the, he, he never ever beat The Rock, couldn't beat Stone Cold, couldn't beat Triple A, he couldn't beat them their very top guy. So him being a top guy coming from WCW is like, after they got that stigma of him being in WCW and the fans got over with him and his little spinner on his shit like he wasn't doing it in WCW. You know, everything's about the gimmick and trying to recreate how people see you. So that's all that shit came down to. And to this very day, when you talk about greatest wrestlers in time, they don't bring up Booker T. And Booker T could wrestle anybody. So, but you know, that's just what it is. Anyway, we see how things happen. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys now. I will catch you on the next video.